Warm Feet for Warriors. It is an awesome program by Soldiers Angels. We're going to talk about their ambitious goals and what they've done so far in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is February 15th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed yesterday, Valentine's Day. The weather definitely worked out. It sure did. By the way, today's National Singles Awareness Day, but I have a pretty good hunch that they are aware that they are single. <laughs> After, after yesterday, mm -hmm. we, we would know. But yes. I will say this, some of the happiest people I know are single. Um, yes, yeah. I've seen that too. All right, moving on outside with live cam as we check in with Justin Horn. Good morning to you, sir. Hey, good morning. I feel like that's a dangerous conversation. <laughs> Let's go to live cam. Yeah. The weather looks great. Uh, yeah. We can see the blue skies out there. It's a beautiful start. Now, we're, we're going to talk about the great weather today and the, the nice weather we have ahead. But I'd be remiss if we didn't look back to a year ago uh, when we were dealing with all the wintry weather, if you remember, we got uh, 2.5 inches of snow on this day one year ago. The wind chill was negative eight. We had snow on the ground. What a morning it was. We got down to nine degrees on this date back in 2021. Let's fast forward to this year. We'll talk about the good stuff. Sunny skies today. We got blue skies out there as we talked about temperatures being the 70s today. So what a difference a year makes. And uh, we'll get some slightly cooler weather ahead in the forecast, but it won't be bitter cold. Let's look at the numbers right now. We're at 50 degrees at the airport, 50 degrees, Bernie stage, 48, Bandera, 50 and Hondo, 52 right now in Divine, 48 down in Pleasanton. And most places now in the 50s, and these numbers will jump up into the 70s this afternoon as we showed you. Pollen count is in. You know, we've had an official, unofficial end to mountain cedar season. Still shows up today, but it's about as low as it gets. It's at 20. Molds are low at 90. And your forecast for today will go uh, 65 noontime. Mostly sunny this afternoon, 72 for high. Winds will be gusty out of the south, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Small window for some showers and storms coming up Wednesday. We'll talk more about that. Also, good looking weekend. That seven day forecast is ahead, but let's check in now with Stephen. Have you had a lot of issues this morning, Stephen? You know, Tuesday traffic, Justin, was pretty troubling uh, throughout the last two hours or so. But right now, it looks like things are quieting down. Let's get one last look at the roadways for this Tuesday morning. There's I-10 at Woodlawn, 35 at St. Mary's. It does look like traffic slowing down there a bit from TransGuide. But other spots like here, 35, right now we're seeing it move pretty smoothly without any issues. However, keep in mind, there are still some problems out there on the roadway, even at this hour. Let's first start here with a bird's eye view of the map, and you can see that we we have a few icons indicating some stalls and some crashes, but right now slowdowns seem to be the big issue. Let's bring you in here to 35 where we have a slowdown there off the southbound lanes at Rotama Parkway. Now there was a crash that was detected a little bit earlier this morning. Thankfully that is cleared out and this slowdown is actually improving. Let's take a drive over here 410 westbound at McCullough Avenue where we located a crash a little bit earlier. That slowdown also quickly improving. Drive down here shows a crash off I-10 eastbound at Houston that looks like it's cleared out and not causing trouble in either lane or direction, but a little bit further down. Keep on the look. Be on the lookout because I 10 westbound at Roland Avenue. There's still a crash that's been reported out there, but overall the morning is it looks like it's improving. We'll continue to keep a close eye on things and give you all the updates as the day does go on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Well, did you know it's still one of the most requested items from our deployed service members and even veterans in VA hospitals? That would be socks. And we've told you about this organization many times before, and Soldiers Angels is working to help our veterans and active duty military men and women with their requests. And Max Massey joins us live from the Vet Center on the city's northwest side. And Max, how are those donations going? Guys, these donations, they're coming in hot. Look at this. We got a lot of veterans out and about here today. Look at this. Take a look around. Let's see. Hey. Hey, guys. You want to wave? Hey. Joined here with Amy. So why are these so important? You know, people are really surprised that socks make such a difference for deployed service members to get a fresh pair after wearing the same socks over and over in the sand and the sweat is really great. But veterans love them too. Hospitalized veterans, um, all veterans, you know, love socks. They're so popular. So for, for something that's so small and, and doesn't cost a lot, it makes a big difference to our service members and veterans. What have the donations looked like so far? So last year we actually collected over 60,000 pairs. Uh, I think a lot of people came out because of COVID and, and they were, you know, cooped up and they were looking for opportunities. We raised our goal this year to 50,000 pairs and we're really hoping we get there. We have about 550 pairs here today and we're going to be distributing some of the vets at this VA Vet Center. Okay, so we're going to take a look around one more time. So what is the plan for the remainder of the day? 
Uh, we're just going to be passing out some socks to some veterans here um, and uh, distributing socks. And we have a lot of socks at the warehouse that we'll be sorting today and, and distributing as well. Still looking for donations? Absolutely. We'll be taking socks um, all the way through the end of next month. All new socks? All new socks, yes, absolutely. And all colors, uh, women's, men's, everything. I mean, even deployed, although in uniform they're only supposed to wear certain colors, but they like them off-duty as well. All right, Amy, thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, we are far from done. Coming up at 9.30, we're going to talk to a veteran here. Why is this so important to them? Back to you guys. Thank you, Max. In your morning headlines, terrifying moments for a Texas woman driving with her child in the car when she suddenly realizes the car was on fire. Plus, new details in the crisis in Ukraine. RJ Marquez joins us in the studio to tell us more about all this. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, morning. good Tuesday morning, guys. Some developments overnight overseas in Russia. Now they are saying there that some units participating in military exercises will begin returning to their bases, and that adds a little bit of hope to the idea that the Kremlin may not be planning to invade Ukraine immediately, but officials gave no details on the pullback. The announcement comes after Russia's foreign minister indicated the country was ready to keep talking about the security grievances that led to the Ukraine crisis. That changed the tenor after weeks of rising tensions over there. Still, Western officials continue to warn of an invasion that could come at any moment, saying some forces and military hardware were moving towards the border. So it wasn't immediately clear where exactly the troops that the Russian defense ministry said were pulling back from were deployed or how many were leaving. We'll continue to follow this story. All right, closer to home in Houston, a uh, pretty tragic story here. A $30,000 reward is now being offered this morning in a road rage shooting that left a nine year old girl seriously injured. Surveillance video captured the moments the little girl suffered a gunshot wound to her head last Tuesday night. She and her family were heading to a grocery store. You can see this is right after the shooting happened, when the shooting happened, and she was actually watching cartoons in the back seat. Police said a driver in a white 2017 GMC Denali Sierra pickup like similar to this one open fire at the vehicle. Houston's mayor is now asking for help solving this case. Until people know that they are going to be caught and punished for what they are doing and that we are putting in deterrence features, then it's going to continue. Nobody's going to use that surveillance equipment to violate anybody's rights. All right, so Chief's talking about how they're going to continue on with this investigation here. So Ashanti Grant is the little girl's name. She remains in the hospital going in critical condition, and Houston officials are trying to use traffic cameras to hope to find that shooter there and find any more information on this case. Okay, also out of the Houston area, a woman found herself in a very scary situation. Check out this video from behind. She was driving with her child in the car when she suddenly realized that the car was on fire. You could see it right there. So they were able to escape and it was all caught on camera. Fire crews in spring responded to the scene on Saturday just before 4 p.m. Video shows the woman driving at least a mile before pulling over and then her car becomes covered in flames and smoke. Check out that video. Fire officials said she had no idea that the car was even on on fire. The woman's transmission light turned on moments before the car caught fire. The woman managed to get herself and their child out before they got trapped in that burning vehicle. She did not notice the car burning. Uh, what made her really stop and notice was she said she had smoke coming out of her air vents. Spoke with the uh, driver of the vehicle and her uh, young child and both of them were very shaken. Obviously very shaken, but okay there. So the Harris County Fire Marshal believes the fire was caused by some sort of mechanical failure, but they are investigating what happened there. Okay, and finally this morning, Justin, check this out. I wonder if you could take on this guy. A Florida teenager is always the center of attention on the basketball court, not only because of his skills, but because of his height. Check this guy out. He's 15 years old and already seven foot five. Yes. Seven feet, what? five inches tall. Unbelievable here. IMG basketball player Olivier Rue is originally from Canada, and he's now in the Guinness Book of Records as the world tallest teenager. And height naturally runs in this big man's family. His dad is 6'8", and his mom is 6'2". And right there, you're looking at a shoe size. It's a size 20 shoe that he's got there. Oof. When I was 10, 11, 12, I started going, and it was getting fast, because, like, every... Week I was like getting I yeah I was like taller than every kids in my school. It's not something you can hide from. You you can't put on a hat and not be seven five anymore. 
I would agree with his head coach there. So his <laughs> yeah. coach says that he's a great kid, good teammate, and loves basketball. And Spurs, listen up to this. He's a good shooter and passer and can finish at the rim. I Finishing at the rim probably for him is like standing on his tippy toes. <laughs> right. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, imagine seven foot five tall. Man, yeah. And now we know why he's at... IMG Academy, exactly. which, if I remember, is a high school for the creme de la creme of high it school is. athletes across the country. Yes, yes, it's a development academy mm -hmm. for some of these kids that are going to be some of the top prospects mm -hmm. across the country. But mm -hmm. uh, only 15 years old, so a couple <sighs> years left, but uh, already looking pretty good out there. He's amazing. Yeah. Isn't IMG down in Florida? It is, Bradenton. Yeah. Yes, sir. Bradenton, Florida. Okay. So, well, good yeah. for him, though. Yeah, I know, right? There. Olivier. <laughs> Reaching new heights. Olivier, <laughs> Olivier what? Olivier Rue. Rue. Yeah. Rue. Okay. All right. Canadian. It's French Canadian. Yeah, it's French Canadian. Just have some fun with it. Thank you very much, RJ. Thanks, guys. 908, about 52 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. We're about to head to the rodeo, and David Sears is standing by to tell us all about the fun there. And the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is in full swing. There are a ton of new things to do for the whole family. David Sears out there checking out the fa fa fun. What's up, David? Hey, Mark and Steph, I tell you what, I think I have found my favorite place in the entire San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo grounds. This is my fave candy store. I just want you to look behind me. 1,600 square feet, 500 different varieties of candy, pure candy. Take you through a uh, quick tour. You can see some of the modern southern, some caramels right in here. Back up there was all different flavors of Tootsie Rolls. And here's some Smarties. Did you know there are three different kinds of Smarties? I did not know that. There's the Tropical Original and Extreme. And look at the size of this Smartie package right here. These are big Smarties for the big smart right there. Have you ever seen a big Smartie? Look at that thing. Just keep coming with me, Dale. We're just going to kind of walk through here. You see, oh, by the way, Bazooka Joe. Remember this? And you used to get the... Uh, Comic, the Bazooka Joe comic, I, it's like, I can't really read it because it's too small, but the print is right there. So there's some Bazooka Joe bubblegum for you. There's some more suckers. Here's some of the modern day stuff. And here's some more suckers right here. The uh, Sweet Sour Charms. Those are awesome candies back over here. Some more suckers, some more suckers. We got more taffy over here. We got all this kind of, ooh, who doesn't like a good root beer barrel, huh? Look at that, root beer barrel. When's the last time you had one of those? You can get it right here at my fave candy store. Here's some more modern stuff, some M&Ms and stuff like that. But when you come around here, you got some more suckers. You got some Starlight peppermints right there, and then we got some stuff that's in bags. This is just—I I know it's amazing, and then we just keep going. There's some modern chocolate stuff, but remember this bag candy right in here? You get stuff. When's the last time you had some butter mints? They got them right here at my fave candy store. They got all kinds. This is play. This is like, this is a uh, little kid's delight right here. Some French bird stuff. And then you've got the sweetest fish, you've got the uh, neon worms, you got all this stuff in bags. But here, we're going to come up with some of the favorite stuff for me. This is like old school up here. We'll get to the old school stuff up right here. I want you to look at it. Remember these? These are those bottles of liquid in wax. You used to like open this up and bite the wax off, and then you would drink the liquid. Let's try this. Let's see what we can do with this real quick. They have this individual ones, but you know what happened? Andrew's going to join me now. He's the, here, Andrew, you talk, and I'm going, to, I'm going to take one of these. So you just bite the top of this, right, Andrew? He's yes. the owner. Correct. And then you just start chewing the and then you drink it. Yep. And then you chew the wax afterwards. Oh, wow, what is that? That's a sour one. Ooh, oh, well, now you tell me. That's the sour that's one. That's a sour one, yes. Andrew, first off, you were here a couple of years ago. The difference now is there's just so much more room. Talk about the fact. Sorry. You're good. I'm chewing the wax. Just, just talk about your candy store and, and how much fun this is to see people come in and maybe buy some of this old stuff. It's fun. It's fun. People come in here, they go crazy. They see all the old-fashioned stuff. You get them drawn in with the fruities and the bullseyes. Next thing you know, they come up with a $30 basket. <laughs> and you, like many other vendors, have some problems. You were telling me earlier that you were almost not able to get all this stuff in here, but you had to do it yourself this year. 
Yeah, so usually it takes about three weeks to get this stuff in. It's uh, now about two and a half months. So I had to order all this stuff in October, get it sent to my stores in Phoenix, and then I had to personally drive them here. We know that the kids love the candy, but how many adults come in here and look at some of this stuff that they had when they were kids? Like, we got the, um, what is it, remember the, the wax teeth and the, the chuckles and the juji fruits? How many adults really get into this? Well, so I tell people all the time, when I try to get this in the new mix, they all say, well, there's a lot of kids. Is there any more popular candy than, than the other kind? What's, what's, what, what does people like the most? I mean, really, it, 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 some of the stuff is uh, regionally based. So some, some areas we sell different things more than others. But basically, I mean, people love the airheads. They love the fruities. They love blow pops. I mean, literally, <laughs> all the saltwater taffy goes over extremely well. So if you can't find your favorite candy in this place, you ain't looking hard enough. Andrew, thank you very much. Thank Absolutely you. incredible. This is, yeah, this is just a sea of candy. Mark and Steph. It looks Ooh. great. I love the Wired giant the Smarties. The too. Yeah. yeah. David Sears, <laughs> living in Candyland during the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> David mentioned that spot last week, yes. and I had a feeling that a live again? shot was in our future. <laughs> yeah, did really you have did. a feeling he would sample some of the candies? I did not know about that. Oh, I, had a, I had a feeling that would happen. But, I'm, but I hope somebody pays for that candy. All right, Justin <laughs> is here with a look at our Tuesday forecast. It's another beautiful day out yeah. there, Justin. It is. If you're heading out to the rodeo today, it's another good one. We're going to see mostly sunny skies as we get into the afternoon. And right now it is uh, just gorgeous out there. Let's go live outside for you. And I'll point out as you look on the horizon there, you see what looks like a little bit of cloud cover off in the distance. Probably uh, seeing some a bit of low cloudiness, maybe some fog there to our north, but certainly not here in San Antonio. 50 degrees, dew point is at 44, and that number is going to be on the rise here over the next, uh, well, day or two. As we look at the satellite picture, there was some of that fog and a little bit of cloud cover I was talking about, but it's quickly, quickly going away. And as we zoom out some, Really uh, a lot of sun there. There's been a few spots where we detected maybe a little bit of fog right there near Del Rio, and I mentioned there around Fredericksburg. Otherwise, temperatures in the 50s and 40s. We're at 49, New Braunfels, 55, Gonzales. A little bit of cloud cover coming off the coast, too. I think as we get into the afternoon, you'll see a little bit of an increase in cloud cover. Let's look at the forecast temperatures. Up to 72 here in San Antonio this afternoon. This is around 4 o'clock. 75, Kennedy. 78 down there in Catula, and then clouds really increase tonight, so that'll keep temperatures up. We'll be in the 50s to start tomorrow. Cloudy skies, a little bit of drizzle to start. And then if we do see any sun tomorrow, that's really going to boost temperatures. Tomorrow will be one of our hottest days. 76 here in San Antonio. Don't be surprised if you see some 80s, even mid 80s down there around Catula and Carrizo Springs tomorrow afternoon. So as we look at the dew point forecast, we see that uh, dew points are starting to rise some, and we'll see those dew points get close to 60 by the time we get into tomorrow. That'll uh, create some fog, I think, maybe a little bit of drizzle before uh, we get our frontal boundary through here, and that clears out a lot of the humidity. Water vapor shows we have an uh, area of low pressure out here around California. That's spinning. That'll dive south and then make its way through Texas and across the plains as we get into Wednesday, and that's going to be the, the reason we do have a small chance, and I mean small chance, for some showers and storms Wednesday night into Thursday. So let's look at the forecast here. This is uh, tomorrow morning, some morning drizzle to start. And then by Wednesday afternoon, it'll be humid, but uh, we'll just be looking at partly cloudy skies. By Thursday morning, this is around 4 a.m., this is our window here. So a broken line of showers, maybe a thunderstorm. We have it at 20% chance, uh, the chances of rain there. And then by 7 a.m., this boundary is moving through, and that brings a small chance for rain. And then everything gets out of here quickly. Thursday is going to be a sunny day, dry and breezy. And then our front comes through Thursday night, and that brings in the cooler wet. Uh, so that means we'll get some pretty decent weather for the weekend. Now, there will be some severe weather with this. Not here, but as we get up to parts of North Texas and Oklahoma, on a scale of 1 to 5, about a 2. So it's low end, but Dallas, Wichita Falls, Texarkana, those are areas that could see some strong storms as this uh, area of low pressure moves through. And rainfall, well, we're not going to get much. I, I think it's probably less than a tenth of an inch. The big rainfall totals are going to be up there around Oklahoma City, Dallas, 
over towards parts of Arkansas where there could be one to three inches. It's, it's just not in the cards for us, unfortunately. Uh, things will stay on, on the dry side. And you see that here in the seven-day forecast. Just that 20% chance of rain Wednesday night into Thursday. Breezy on Thursday, 75, so still warm. But then once that front comes through it, it gets uh, pretty chilly Friday morning. 33 to start, 60 on Friday, 65 Saturday, 69 on Sunday. And then another small chance of rain by early next week for President's Day. Uh, unfortunately, guys, it's a pretty dry forecast, but at least it's mm. warm compared to last year, as we've been <laughs> talking about. It's uh, very, very different, guys. Yes, it's like a walk in the park now. No I agree. kidding. I mean, I know we've tried to put last year in our rearview mirror, but it does so offer some perspective on it the does. contrast. It yes. does. And, you know, just to give you some perspective on this date, uh, we've been as warm as 86 and as cold as 9 degrees. Wow. So this is the time of year where we see a full range of temperatures. Mm. Some folks would say uh, February's whack around here. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I agree. 921, about 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. New details about the fentanyl crisis, and it's hitting us right here at home. What San Antonio DEA agents say about what they are finding. It's a drug killing people across the nation and right here in Texas, including Bear County. We're talking about fentanyl. The synthetic opioid can be mixed into things like fake Adderall pills and make their way to college students, and it has the potential to cause death after just one single use. Freddy Santos tells us an amount smaller than a pinch of salt is even a huge concern. We are seeing the largest amounts of fentanyl ever seized in the history of the United States. DEA Assistant Special Agent in Charge Dante Sorianello says fentanyl manufactured in underground mills in China and Mexico is mixed with illegal drugs to increase their potency. It is 50 times more potent than heroin. Most often it's used on fake prescription pills. There is a certain part of the people who are overdosing and passing away they don't know what's fentanyl they're taking. An amount smaller than the tip of a pencil is deadly. DEA lab testing shows about 40% of the drugs on the street laced with fentanyl contain a deadly amount. In the last four months in San Antonio alone, we've seized over 200,000 fake oxycodone pills containing fentanyl. So if, it's at, if we're playing with the 40% number, that means 80,000 of those pills could have a potential lethal dose and could kill 80,000 people. And it is. In the 2020 medical examiner's autopsy reports, more than 94% of the overdoses were accidental. About 16% could be traced to fentanyl or a combination of the drug. Since 2016, OD deaths connected to fentanyl have been trending upward. One pill can kill, and it is happening everywhere. People are dying. Know it going in. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Of course, there is more ahead on GMSA at 9. And as we head to break, let's look at the roads right there with TransSky. Looks like there's a little bit of a hold up there at I-37 and Carolina. And I-10 and Frio looking okay right now. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 930. So Soldiers Angels are working to help our veterans and active military men and women. The Warm Feet for Warriors Sock Collection, that's, it started running on February 1st and will run through March 31st of 2022. Max Massey joins us live at the Vet Center on the northwest side. Max, how many veterans are out there? Well, guys, take a look. These veterans come here for a number of different reasons but today. They're getting socks. Joined here with Amy from Soldiers Angels. So, Amy, how many socks have you guys donated so far? Um, well, this year we um, have about 4,000 pairs of socks. We brought about 500 pair with us today, so we'll distribute to some veterans and then leave them here to give them out to some additional veterans. The goal, 50,000 socks. Our goal is 50,000. Last year we collected 65,000 pairs, so we think we'll get there, but um, hopefully we'll get, we'll get to the 50,000. Now, my big thing is there's still time to donate. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, we're taking socks through the end of next month. So um, there's plenty of time for people to donate socks. And, you know, they're affordable and anybody can do it. We're here locally if people want to drop them off or mail them in and we'll take any kind of sock. Fantastic. Now you get to see, you know, the joy of all these veterans faces getting the socks getting the new socks joined here with Rich over here. So Rich, 23 year veteran of the Army. Why are these socks so important? Yeah, I think uh, everybody, anybody can relate to what it's like to have wet socks, to have cold, wet feet. And um, our nation's military, uh, our veterans, 
um, you know, the, these are folks that have sacrificed and, and our, our active duty military is out there. They're doing maneuvers. They're running, jumping. They're fully loaded uh, with all their gear. Um, it's an opportunity for us to provide them with uh, a for? brand new pair of, of dry oh, socks uh, that'll just change their day. And what better oh, group okay, of people, yeah. you know, yeah. than, than our nation's veterans and, and military. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Guys, if you need questions, how to donate, where to donate, we're going to have those answers yeah. throughout the day. Just head to KSAT.com. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. And these days, it's no easy task to separate rumor from reality and swim through a sea of fiction to find the facts. That's right. Cordy Friedman from our Trust Index team joins us to talk about their constant quest for truth when it comes to stories and issues that affect pretty much all of us. Thanks for joining us, Courtney. Yes, of course. And I'm glad we're bringing up this topic because you've seen these Trust Index stories in all of our in all of our newscasts. You bet. So for people that don't know, please explain, explain why the Trust Index exists. Right. So there was there's a huge need for this in general in journalism, but with social media, with you know, the misinformation that we all know about. Checking your sources can be difficult. We have access to experts. We have access to sources. So we figured that we would help fact check for you. We have a trust index uh, section on our website that you're seeing right now that you can submit your claims. And of course, a lot of it is politics. A lot of it is COVID related. But, you know, it's we, we it's across the gambit. And what have you been working on lately? So lately, we've been doing a lot of COVID-related uh, stories, specifically just because the Omicron variant really, you know, sent us for a big wave and uh, it really touched all of our lives. So we ramped up our COVID response because mainly we got a lot of questions from you, the viewers, about Omicron um, and how it's affecting uh, the different variants. So one of the stories I've done recently was about the Omicron variant. And one of the questions was, can you get the same variant twice? And if you've had the same variant twice, do you still need to be vaccinated? So spoiler alert, you can get the same variant twice, unfortunately. And because you can get multiple variants, you do need to get the vaccine still. That is what's suggested. Um, you know, and, and then we there were a lot of questions about infertility. We, we, we went over this years ago with, when it came to the vaccine, but we also uh, just looked at some studies that the vaccine cannot affect fertility, according to these studies, in men or women. But COVID itself, there are multiple studies that just came out in the last couple of weeks. COVID itself can affect male fertility. Can. So it can, yes. And that was a, a big question, a bunch of questions we had. Um, and it was really enlightening to talk to those experts. So, Courtney, that brings us to a, a good question. Are you ever surprised when you or the other team members are able to prove or even disprove something? Yeah, a lot of the questions that the viewers come up with and that we find online, like we are always looking for things that uh, seem a little off. We have those questions ourselves. We're just like you. We want to wade through that misinformation and make sure that we're getting the facts right. Obviously, as journalists, that's our number one goal. So, yes, there are a lot of questions that come out, like these new studies that we're learning right along with the viewers. So we really appreciate people sending in these wonderful questions. Um, I'm working on one today, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of those questions, how can viewers submit this to the Trust Index team? Right. So as you've been seeing on our screen, there is a Trust Index website page on ksat.com. You just go to ksat.com slash trust index and you can scroll in there is a little prompt in there that says what claim would you like us to check out um, you just list your contact information where you saw the claim what you want us to look at and yeah that's it from there we'll look at it can you give us a bit of a hint what you're working on today <laughs> okay is it, is it still covid related it is covid related okay, okay. it's a, it's a good this is a great example of one that i had no idea and so talking to this was on your radar was not on my radar okay um, it's about the newly approved vaccines and the brand names that are associated with them. Oh. okay yes all right we'll be watching a, closely another good one all right <laughs> all right Courtney thank Freeman, you. thank you. Of course, good to see you guys. Good, good to see you. you. Let's go outside with live cam, and it's a beauty of a day out there. If you didn't get a chance to get out and about yesterday, maybe you can do so today. Yeah, today's another good one. Temperatures will actually be a little bit warmer today than they were yesterday. We're thinking low to mid-70s for highs a little bit later this afternoon. So far, cloud-free. I think clouds increase a little bit this afternoon as we look across the state. Some clouds up across the Panhandle. Not much here yet, but you notice out the Gulf of Mexico, you see some spotty cloud cover there. That's going to be shifting in. That is that humidity that will be working its way in a little bit later today and tonight. Uh, temperatures right now 49 New Braunfels, 57 in Gonzales, 53 Kerrville, 50 in Rock Springs as we zoom out some. A little chillier as you get up into the Panhandle, as you might expect. 45 Lubbock, 40 right now in Amarillo. And there's a look at the dew points. Yeah, it's dry right now. We've got dew points in the 40s. That would 
be in the dry category. But notice there along the coast, a little bit of green showing up. That is that humidity that will be surging in later tonight. That leads to some drizzle, some fog in more humid conditions tomorrow. Our forecast today takes us up to 72. We will get some gusty winds out of the south, 5 to 15. Could see if you gusts up around 25 miles per hour or so. Some thunderstorm chances coming up. We'll talk about that. Plus uh, some cooler weather as we head towards the weekend. That forecast in just a few minutes, guys. Very good. Thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with TransGuy. There's a look there at Loop 410 at Starcrest where things are moving smoothly right now. Also at Highway 281 and Hildebrand. This morning on KSAT.com, local college students can cash in on a contest that looks back at major events here in Texas history and getaways close to home that could, could feel like you're headed to an international destination. Plus, a local connection to the state-of-the-art Los Angeles Stadium that hosted this year's Super Bowl. RJ is back with a look at some of these trending stories on KSET.com. There he is. I'm here. Yes, I'm back. And thanks for emphasizing could, Mark, because yes, we want to say, yes, these are, <laughs> we're not saying these are international spots, but they feel like them. So okay. I, I don't know. Maybe you guys have been to a few. Let's see what but, you got. Uh, yeah. We'll get to that story here in just a bit. But uh, first of all, this is a really interesting thing here. So get ready to learn about Texas history and what shaped our state with a competition at the Witty Museum. I did not know about this. The Battle of Flowers Association's 97th Annual Oratorical Contest will be held on February 25th. College students will be competing for cash prizes as they take us on a trip trip back in time to discover and share the stories of the events that altered the course of Texas history. It's pretty cool. The contest started back in 1926 and is the oldest university and college level competition in the state of Texas. And this year's theme is defining disasters, reshaping Texas and Texans. So we can hear anything. If some of these pieces could be about the great storm of 1900 to tornadoes in the Texas Panhandle in the late 1930s. And we have more information on this contest on K ksat.com. So very interesting thing to look at how we were sort of shaped in the landscape. I know we had a flood here in the 1920s also, which mm -hmm. kind of led to the river walk. And no, so yeah. no, but nobody in here was here for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, think I don't so. remember that. You're, on, you're, on, so. you're not on the right shift. <laughs> yeah. Check with others. Um, all right, guys, speaking of Texas, so this is obviously a pretty diverse state when it comes to our landscape and things to do. So right now on our website, we have a great list of Texas destinations that can feel like international getaways. So we have waterfalls, deserts, mountains, and canyons all in the Lone Star State. In fact, did you know that the second largest canyon in the entire country is right here in Texas? That's right. Paladuro Canyon is known as the Texas Grand. And Canyon. So other notables on this list, Balmeray Pool, which is located inside Balmeray State Park, pretty cool spot there, and Flower Garden Banks, which is actually a coral reef off of the Texas coast. So we have a lot more here. Prudinalis is one of them. We also included the uh, botanical gardens here as well. So uh, yeah, you can check out a full list and pictures of these amazing spots across the state. Well, you got us there, RJ. There's yeah. a couple there I, uh, we'd never heard of before. Mm -hmm. Jacob's nice. Well, Hamilton Pool, or some yeah. other ones. I know like about that. those, but yeah. I didn't know about the reef. Didn't know about the the other one, Balmorea. Balmorea, Bal yes. Bal I had to ask Justin. <laughs> <Say that. laughs> Balmorea. Did I get it right? Spot. Okay, good. Balmorea, yeah. The pool, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so a lot of cool spots and destinations if you guys want to check that out on our website. All right, guys, and finally, before SoFi Stadium in L.A. hosted this year's Super Bowl, the design came all from the mind of a San Antonian. Yes, Lance Evans is the lead architect for the $5 billion stadium, $5 billion. He graduated from Churchill all the way back in 1999, where he got his start, of course, in architecture. He went to Texas Tech, shout out David Sears there, then joined the <laughs> HKS architecture firm in Dallas, and then actually helped design AT&T Stadium, so he was a part of that team. Lance is now the director of sports at HKS in LA, and SoFi is the league's first indoor-outdoor stadium. It was built around a lake, you can see that right there, and has a two-sided oval video board, really cool thing that, and they also have a translucent roof. He said in a recent interview that he wanted to keep sports fans connected to the landscape of Southern California. They also have palm trees in there. Mm -hmm. wow. A lot of natural things are inside of that stadium, in and out. Yeah. That's super cool, and it's all yeah. started here. It's all from a San Antonian, yes. That's pretty cool. And considering AT&T Stadium cost over a billion, so far over five billion yes. wow. dollars. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I mean, just bigger and better and more expensive. It just gets, yeah. yeah, exactly. The prices just go up for these stadiums. But right. uh, that stadium is amazing, though. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good right. job to Lance. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> more on KSET.com. RJ, thanks. thanks Thank you. Right now, 941, about 55 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. That's right. And coming up after the break, we 
we will be checking back in to see all the rodeo fun right here on GMSA at 9. This morning we are continuing the fun out at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Our David Sears is out there live again. And David, what are you up to out there now? Yeah, Steph and Mark, you know, we keep finding very interesting places here inside the Expo Hall at San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. We have found the Horny Toad Crossing. And when we say Horny Toads, we do mean Horny Toads. Look at all these varieties and different Horny Toads. These are all handmade. We will tell you, no Horny Toad was ever hurt in the process. These are all handmade Horny Toads. And the man that puts these all together, Tom McCain, the Horny Toad man. Tom, welcome to San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo again. I love it. The rodeo's great. What brings you here with all your horny toads? Why horny toads? Well, uh, a lot of reasons, uh, mainly financial also, because I, uh, I started making a lot of different animals, but the horned toad ended up being the most popular. Why is the horned toad so popular? It keeps you in business all these well, years. Well, uh, fond memories of childhood and that it is the official state reptile of Texas. Well, that's, that's enough for just about anybody if you're from Texas, right? That's right. So, talk to me about the about the process. You you obviously put a lot of hard work into into developing these tornadoes because they look authentic. They look absolutely real. So talk to me about the different varieties you have here. Well, I actually make all the species, seventeen different species, but I start with a block of wax and I hand carve every little horn and scales one at a time, even his tummy, and I sign and date them, my copyrighted work. Then I make a rubber mold off those wax carvings, and from the mold, then I can cast in metal. This is, now this one went right here, the silver one right here, this is pewter. American pewter, no lead, and uh, it really brings out the detail in the piece. And you know, Dale was getting a really tight shot there a second ago, and you could absolutely see the detail. And this thing is not light. This thing, how much does this thing weigh? Uh, this weighs just under a pound of, of American pewter. And it's, uh, it's, it's surprising when you place this in a person's hand, their hand goes down because it's unexpected. And this one is painted? This is hand painted on top of the American pewter and makes him really lifelike. And I, I wanted to show you this. This is this is this is a hood ornament. So if you really need something for the hood of your car, you just get you a horny toe and pop that. And what? And people driving down the street, I'm sure they're pretty impressed with that, aren't they? Well, I actually uh, have one on my truck, and uh, the the humor is that uh, people take notice of that horn toad. In fact, they kind of point their finger, saying, "There goes that horny toad." Yep. <laughs> Who knew that the horny toad could be so popular, but it is the reptile of Texas? Absolutely. So there, that's all you need to know. That, that's certainly the big part. And you've been doing this for years and, and selling a lot of these and bringing a lot of joy to a lot of people. So, Tom, thank you very much. Welcome back to the San Antonio. 19th year here? In 19 years, yep. So, all right. So the folks will be coming over to get their horny toad. So there you go. See? We've got all kinds of stuff here at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Who knew you could get a horny toad? Right? That's cool. I didn't Mark know that Steph. was there. All right, Dude, David Sears out there at Horny Toad Company at San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Thank you, David. And David was indoors, but it's kind of nice outside right now. It is. And when David shows up with a new hood ornament today, I'll know <laughs> We why. know. Right. Know yeah, just be on the lookout. Well, I can tell you it's a tundra. There's plenty of tundras in town, but yes. if you see a gold horny toad on a tundra, it might be David wait Sears. for David Sears. <laughs> David Sears. You'll know why. Uh, it is beautiful out there. And if you have plans to go out to the rodeo today, it's, it's another good day for that. Lows this morning. We did not get down to freezing. It was 41 here in San Antonio, 42 in Kerrville, 36 in New Braunfels. So we, we got rid of the freezing temperatures uh, due in large part to a little bit of added humidity. And we're just kind of warming up in general. 42 was low in Kerrville, 45 in Fredericksburg. They actually had a little more cloud cover up there. So temperatures were warmer in the hill country than they were here in places like Hondo, where it got down to 34. Let's talk a little bit about that average last freeze. We mentioned this last week, but it's worth mentioning again. Our average last freeze is February 24th here in San Antonio, but keep in mind that's just an average. It's been as late as April 3rd, 1987. And I do think that we still have a couple freezes potentially in our forecast as we get towards the weekend. Here's a look outside. Hey, look, there's a cloud, one cloud. Otherwise, it's uh, clear skies, and we've got 50 degrees at the airport, 53 stints and 52 at Kelly. 49 right now, Randolph, and starting to see a little bit of a south-southeasterly wind. Those winds will pick up today. 
49 in New Braunfels, 59 in Comfort. Checking in at 53, Del Rio 55 down there in Catula. And those dew points, as we mentioned, are on the rise right down the 40s. That puts us in the dry category, but that moisture is setting uh, just to our south and east, and it will push in today with those southerly winds. You'll see the dew point really start to rise. And by tomorrow morning, that will lead to some fog drizzle mist, and uh, it will be sort of damp, I think, to start tomorrow. Wind gust forecast today, we should see some gusts up around 20, 25 during the afternoon hours, and those winds will even be a little bit gusty tonight, so just heads up there. Uh, forecast temperatures today, 72 here in town, 76 in Pleasanton, close to 80 in Catula, and then some upper 60s in places like Kerrville and Bernie. Clouds increase tonight. It'll be cloudy for most of us by tomorrow morning. We're only dropping in the 50s, 58 degrees here in town. And then tomorrow afternoon, one of our warmest days. There will be 80s on the map tomorrow. 84 in places like Catula, 82 Carrizo Springs, and then mid to even upper 70s around the rest of the area. It'll be warm and humid. Uh, we'll be waiting on our next storm system, which is gathering strength out over the western part of the country. A little bit of snow in places like uh, Montana and the parts of Idaho, but not a lot out there right now with this system. As it moves towards the middle part of the country, though, it'll tap into that moisture and help to create some thunderstorms. So here's our forecast. So morning drizzle tomorrow, and then as we get into tomorrow afternoon, humid with some peaks of sun, but more clouds tomorrow than today. By Thursday, this is early Thursday morning, 4 a.m., so pre-sunrise, we're going to see some showers and storms developing along a dry line or a Pacific front. Just a small chance of rain here, and this goes through about 7 a.m. After that, we get clear skies. It'll be dry and breezy, and then some cooler air works in by Thursday night. Uh, as far as rainfall goes with this system, not much for us. Less than a tenth of an inch. The bigger totals will be off to our north and east. So here's how it looks in the seven-day forecast. 76 tomorrow, mostly cloudy, 20% chance of rain Wednesday into Thursday morning. Then breezy and clearing on Thursday. Cooler Friday, 60. And I mentioned some of those temperatures close to freezing Friday and Saturday morning. We'll be right back. We've got a quick look at the forecast. Yeah, quick look at the forecast. 72 yeah. degrees today, 76 tomorrow, 75 Thursday, but it does cool down by Friday and into the weekend. Sports story on KSAT.com. Becky Hammond's having a very good year. Right around New Year's Day, she was named the new head coach of the WNBA Las Vegas Aces. That's right. So it's no surprise that she will headline the Women's Hall of Fame class of 2022. That's right. Becky Hammond, Penny Taylor, and others named to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2022. Of course, she's being honored for a long career in the WNBA. That's right. Uh, honored for that and for her time at Colorado State. She was a six-time All-Star and was voted one of WNBA's 15 greatest players of all time back in 2011. What a feather in her cap. Yep. As a matter of fact, uh, again, Becky's been named the head coach of the Las Vegas Aces. So as I said, she's having a very, very good year. Some speculation is she may be the Spurs coach at some point in the future, right. maybe. Well, we hope. And we guess yeah, that we there like maybe her. there was an out in her Aces contract that I would allow her to come back to San Antonio one day. We'll see. We I think, shall see. I think she had a lot of things on her contract. <laughs> She's like, you guys are putting the cart ahead of the horse. 